Welcome back. It took more than 100 years to find Serenis Shackleton's ship Endurance, which sank on an expedition to Antarctica in the year 1915. When it was discovered, perfectly preserved in the icy water, it was by archaeologists in 2022. Well, now new technology has been used to create a detailed 3D scan which shows the wreck in minute detail. Our science editor, Rebecca Morrell, can tell us more. In the icy waters of Antarctica, 3,000 metres down, Sir Ernest Shackleton's famous ship, Endurance. But in the gloom of the deep, you can only catch glimpses of this 100-year-old wreck. Now a new 3D scan has transformed our view of it. Made from 25,000 high-resolution images, you can see the ship from every angle, from the stern to the bow, as though the water has been drained away. The fact that we've got this millimetre-perfect three-dimensional scan will bring the story of Shackleton to a whole new audience, because it's quite difficult to take people down 3,000 metres to the seabed under the Antarctic ice. But with this scan, we can give it to people. They can take it into their own lives. They can look at it themselves. They may even discover things that we've missed. It's incredibly exciting. On October 26th, the end came. All hopes of accomplishing our objective vanished. The voice of Shackleton. This was his ship just before it sank in 1915. Captured on camera at the time, the footage has been colorized for a new documentary called Endurance. The ship became stuck in thick sea ice just weeks after setting off from South Georgia. It drifted for months before an order was eventually given for the crew to abandon the ship. Miraculously, they all survived, but Endurance was lost. For the first time with this 3D scan, we can see endurance in its entirety, exactly as it is on the sea floor. But we can also zoom into minute detail. There are dinner plates scattered across the deck. These would have been used by the crew every day. There's also an abandoned leather boot, which may have belonged to Frank Wilde, Shackleton's second in command. Nearby, there's a flare gun. This was fired by Frank Hurley, the expedition's photographer, just as the ship was lost to the ice. Hurley gets this, he finds this flare gun, and he fires the flare gun into the air with a massive detonator to, as a tribute to the ship. And then in the diary, he talks about putting it down on the deck. And there we are, we come back over 100 years later, and there's that flare gun. Incredible. For decades, endurance was missing in the icy depths. But after a mammoth search effort in this remote corner of the world, the ship was finally found in 2022. I would like to introduce the endurance. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Perfectly preserved, it was frozen in time by the icy waters. Shackleton's descendants say it will never be raised. So this exact digital replica offers a new way to study the ship. Here, it's absolutely fabulous. The wreck is almost intact, like she sank yesterday. If you have a biologist, you may look at the sea life. If you're an archaeologist, you may look at artifacts. If you have, I don't know, a geologist, you may look all around the type of seabed we have. So this is really a great opportunity that we can offer for the, for the future. The extraordinary story of Shackleton and his ship has fascinated for more than 100 years. The scans give us a new link between the past and the present to bring endurance to a new generation. Rebecca Morrell, BBC News. Well, you saw there the historian Dan Snow was one of those fortunate enough to be part of that expedition team, Endurance 22. Morning. Morning. What a treat. So when you oh. got the phone call and just said, Fancy doing this. Like, just how many split seconds did it take for you to say yes? I was on a train platform. I was meant to catch a train, and I and they, this this voice went, "Are you interested in going to look for the wreck of endurance?" And I just and it was like time stopped, and I just said, "You're not getting off this phone until I persuade you that I am the right person." I'm going to podcast about it, and TikTok about it, and Instagram about it. We're going to make documentary. I and, and then I managed to persuade them. That I, I went on the expedition. That it was the as I say to my wife the greatest professional experience of my life. How, how long were you actually out there for? About two months. But it came at the end of the COVID lockdown, so I, my kids and my wife were sort of quite happy to see me go at that point, because I'd been sort of banging around the house for so two years. So you have experience now in a very small way of what the men on that expedition 
went through. It's a very good point you make, because usually when I've been very lucky to go around the world to battlefields, and, and when you visit something, you say, oh, I think I'm, le I'm, getting, I'm learning this, I'm, I understand this, Mona. I went down there to the Southern Ocean, I stood on the ice, and actually I have less idea how they did it. I, I just cannot understand it. The cold seeps into you, it, it reduces your morale, it makes you listless. It's, and I, was, I had modern clothing and stuff and could disappear into the warm ship if I wanted. The waves are so gigantic, I have no idea how you'd go in an open boat over those. I have no idea how they survived. I, I, I feel I understand less having been there and seeing the conditions. Now, the moment, so you're on board this ship behind us, this modern vessel, and you'll look at the cameras and it's searching beneath the ocean. Yeah. And then uh, the, the quest <sighs> ends. It's, it's this extraordinary moment when something appears in the gloom beneath you. The, 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 the bottom of the Weddell Sea is very featureless, which is good, because it means if something stands out on the, on the sonar immediately, and we had, the, we had the drone, 4K camera, we'd spotted something on the sonar, we didn't know what it, exactly what it was, and we came over the seabed like this, and we went bang, straight to the side of that wooden ship, and you can see the wood is as, as clear as the day it sank, the, the rivets, and then that gold brass lettering of endurance on the stern, the, look at the steering wheel, every, and we were there in the middle of the night, and it was incredibly special. We, there were, I think there were some tears, there were people just, you know, shouting out with excitement, and we in that little room knew that we were in possession of a secret that soon the whole world was going to have to share and get obsessed by. And for that few hours, we were just there together. It was incredibly special. And the reason the ship was at the bottom of the ocean was it could not survive the ice. The ice, and I know the captain on board the ship, and I, uh, having seen the film, he even now says, the ice is in charge. Oh, yeah. You know, even with the, you know, the amazing technology you have and the strength of the ship, those, some of those fundamentals don't change in those places. The Agulhas II is an icebreaker, but it can't break through. It can only break through about two metres of sea ice. If it gets to more than that, it has to... So we had to reroute. So when big flows of sea ice would come in and the weather would... We'd have to escape and we'd get, work around the edge using satellite imagery, and then we'd come and try and break into the ice from another angle where it was a bit thinner, and then we'd put the drone down to the sea, but then we'd have to pull it back up again because big ice was coming. So even today, with all of that technology and all of the advantage we have, you're still in one of the most hostile places on Earth. So, so to describe it, and you will do this, so in that flow, because there's a particular part where the ice flows, just describe what would have happened to the endurance, because there's a trail, isn't there, of, of how it goes, and it's not in a straight line. It doesn't no. travel in a straight line. It can't. Absolutely. So the endurance sailed into the Weddell Sea. The ambition had been to cross Antarctica, land on one side, cross to the other. No one had ever done that before. And he never even set foot on Antarctica. He got crushed. That's the great thing about Shackleton. He was a failure. But it's in failure that you see true greatness, because that's when he brought everyone home. That's when he provided that leadership, and that's why we love him. Because uh, we all fail at stuff. We all fail all the time. And, and so they got stuck in the ice. And then eventually, after a few months, the ice just started to move and pressure storms, distant, distant storms sent pressure away, and it crushed the hull of the endurance. It started to sink. They had to go and live on the ice, and eventually, after about a month, endurance just sank beneath the ice. And they thought, no one will ever see that again. 3,000 metres down beneath the ice. And 100 years later, we were lucky enough to get a drone down there to see it. I dare say he'd be pleased, wouldn't he? That the explorers once again have kind of... It's almost a history of repeating itself. They have found something. Well it, well, it, well, it was. I think he'd be thrilled. He'd be thrilled. He loved publicity. He'd be thrilled that we were TikToking live. He'd be thrilled we're on BBC Breakfast. He'd been thrilled that his name and this story... Well, is... he filmed it. Because he, he knew it. if you don't... I think you put the line in the film. If it ain't on film, it never happened. He was a millennial. He was a Gen Xer. He knew exactly if you don't film, it hasn't happened. So he brought... It was the first great expeditionary documentary maker was on board that ship. Uh, and also, they left as First World War was breaking out in Europe. We left as the as the Russia invaded Ukraine. They got stuck in the ice. We actually got stuck in the ice for 36 hours as well, even on that ship. So there were lots of strange parallels. Uh, it is a fascinating it story. Uh, your enthusiasm leaps out. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Endurance is the name of the film. It premieres at the London Film Festival this Saturday. will be available on Disney Plus later this year. And Dan's book, The Story of England, Making of a Nation, is out now. That's all from us. We're back tomorrow at 6am. Do have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.